This is Michael Popak, and it's time for Legal AF After Dark. You want to know a day-by-day, blow-by-blow summary of what's going on with the Manhattan DA's criminal trial that's already started one week down against Donald Trump? There's only one place to do it. Might as touch in the Legal AF podcast. We give you actual cheat sheets that you can use to show you what happened, the, the major events that happened each of the days of the week that Donald Trump is in trial. Four days a week, six weeks in total or so. Learn more. Join us on Legal AF. Take a listen. There was that final moment, and I want to get your take on it, Popak, about how you think Justice Mershon, the presiding judge, has been handling uh, these matters, um, where uh, Donald Trump got up to leave thinking the day was going to be over after the jury had left. And then Justice Mershon said, Sir, sit down right now. I have not excused you. You understand? And Donald Trump like put his hands up sheepishly and was like, I get it, I get it, I get it. I'll, I'll, I'll sit down. And Justice Mershon was like, thank you. In any event, counsel, and then went on with his kind of usual business. It's actually been great to see Justice Mershon control the courtroom the way the way he is. I had always heard about Justice Mershon's reputation, that he was no nonsense, so it's it's good to it's good to see that. And then Justice Mershon said, I'll see you next week, you know, at the contempt hearing. Um, so what w- what do you make of that? I, I think he's gonna be found in contempt. Oh yeah. I think it will be a first tier violation. I, I do think though, I, and I truly think this, it's not just like, oh, you know, Justice, you, you know, you're, you're going to spread that Popokian opium, you smoke that Popokian opium. I really think that Mershon will throw Trump in jail if he does it after getting, like, he'll get sanctioned at this hearing. And I think Mershon's the kind of judge who will throw Trump in jail. There's a cell, as Karen Friedman Agnifilo described it, like, kind of right down the hallway. And I think that Trump will be placed in that holding cell if he violates it after the first monetary sanction he's going to get. What do you think, Popak? Well, a couple of things. Um, as to the first witness, I'm not sure that they bore the jury on the prosecution with the Czech person. Um, I think my, if I were trying this case, I would ha- I wouldn't put in Michael Cohen. I mean, you don't leave with Michael Cohen. But you may want to leave with somebody with a little more substance to be a little bit more of a roadmap witness. I don't know if that's David Pecker or if that's somebody else. It's not Hope Hicks. I just think it's not going to be the records custodian type, which will lead to glassy eyed after, you know, what will be explosive opening statements to then numb the jury to death with the first witness. But we'll see. Prosecutors, you know, are conservative cats and I'm more of a swing for the fences type trial lawyer anyway. So we'll see what happens on that. You're right about a busy trial week and, and, and hearing week for Donald Trump. 22nd, he's got that hearing, New York Attorney General bond case, where I agree with you when we get to the segment. I think his bond is in jeopardy, meaning collection efforts against him can start. Contempt on the 23rd, 24th, Judge Meta down in the District of Columbia has ordered the lawyers to, because uh, he's letting their civil, civil fraud case brought by the Metropolitan Capitol Police to move forward. They have to make a major filing in that case. And on the 25th, we've got an oral argument. Uh, for the Supreme Court. This is must-watch podcasting and YouTubing on the Midas Touch Network. Um, our network may explode next week based on everything that we have to fo- everything we have to follow. As to the um, Judge Mershon being in charge, we've been consistently predicting that it was going to be an entire new world and universe for Donald Trump and that everything that he had tried to get away with in civil court when there's been no jury was not going to work for him. What we meant by that is that he would be in jeopardy of criminal contempt, being uh, sanctioned, admonished frequently by the judge. And you and I, and I've certainly reported in hot takes in the past, there, the Manhattan DA went into the room and watched Donald Trump in action during the second E.G. Carroll case. Manhattan DA went into the room, in the back of the room, and watched Donald Trump in action during the uh, civil fraud 13-week trial, including when Donald Trump tried to testify and all of that. 
So when they wrote about some of this stuff, it's some of it's from experience. The reason they did that is they wanted to learn and to be ready for Donald Trump in the criminal case because they didn't think, and neither do you and I, Ben, did we think that Donald Trump was going to start suddenly grow a brain and grow decorum and grow restraint and he was going to act differently in the criminal cases than he had acted in the civil cases. They believed, rightly so, that he was going to act out the same way and they wanted to be ready and prepared for it. And Mershon, too, is no dummy. He's been sitting in New York reading the paper and the media. He knows what happened. He knows how many times Judge Kaplan in the E. Jean Carroll case had to admonish Donald Trump. The arguments that he got into with Donald Trump in ways that we were almost aghast that that was happening in the civil cases. We know how disrespectful and um, uh, and, uh, and uh, how much acting out he did for 13 weeks in the Judge Angoron. Uh, presided over a civil fraud case with no jury, just the bench, attacking the law clerk, attacking Judge Angoron, attacking his wife, attacking, attacking, attacking. And that was without a jury. We always said, wait till he gets, if he thinks this is the playbook for Trump that's going to work in, in with Judge Mershon, he is in for a rude awakening. Some of the reporting out there is that, uh, because as much as I criticize some of his lawyers, like Todd Blanche, Todd Blanche had had, operative word, a good reputation when he was a prosecutor for 13 years in the U.S. Attorney's Office, where he was the head of the criminal division at one point. Um, It's now in tatters, as far as I'm concerned, by the way he's operating currently. But Blanche, according to people that know him, is aghast that Donald Trump is already running afoul of Judge Mershon, that he is um, using ridiculous facial expressions expressions, and acting out in front of the what was then the jury to be selected or in front of the jury and um, all of these things. As, as I said, as I joked with, with Karen during midweek, when that video of Trump with Blanche next to him behind the bike rack when he gives that press conference is priceless because Blanche looks like, you know, he's, you could saw, you could amputate his leg without anesthesia. I mean, that's, he just, is, he's just not present. And Susan Necklace is like seven rows back, the other lawyer, and she's just holding her clipboard acting like I'm not the lawyer for Donald Trump. So they, they've got a big problem with Donald Trump. Rashawn has to do exactly what he has said. He's already invited the Manhattan DA to file a motion for sanctions for bad faith filing in this case. You and I reported on it last week. It was buried in one of Rashawn's orders, which was, you didn't ask me for this now, but there is bad faith filing in this case. You are welcome to seek a remedy related to it. That has to do with the filings that have been made in the case. Then you had the gag order violation, and and enough is enough. And I, I think that uh, Judge Rashawn was very smart and canny to push it off to the 23rd. Not necessarily because he needed full briefing. I think he's giving Donald Trump another entire weekend weekend to violate. You said it's seven. I think it'll be up to 12 or more. There's a whole weekend to go before they get to the 23rd. Um, And nothing stops Donald Trump. Not facing a jury on Monday morning, not opening statements, not the chance of him being convicted of a Class C felony, not up to 20 years in prison, nothing changes his approach that he's going to pressure and pressurize all of our institutions, including the New York criminal justice system. So Mershon telling him to sit the F down, my paraphrase, uh, which is not the first time he's told him to do that, that letting him know that there is, there's only two, yes, the criminal defendant has rights. (laughs) Two most important participants in the criminal justice system, as far as I'm concerned, is the jury for whom you stand. There's a reason you stand for them out of respect and the judge who sits on high on a bench. Criminal defendant, yes, presumed innocent and all of that, um, and does have a fair and partial jury, but they are not the most important people in that room, and and certainly not Trump versus the judge. The least important person is Donald Trump. And if he didn't do that, then like you said in the past, you give him a, you give Donald Trump a, a finger, he takes your life or whatever you say. You know, you have to start laying down bright lines uh, and and uh, draw lines in the sand, or Donald Trump will take full advantage of it. I believe I agree with you. I think it's going to be progressive discipline. I think he's going. He's already told. This is the second warning. He's already told. Rashawn's already told Trump about two weeks ago, reminding him 
that if you violate the gag order, let me remind you of my two inherent authorities. One is criminal contempt, and the other is fines and jail. And they are on the table. He told them that in writing two weeks ago. He will remind them of that when he issues his order in which he fines him and or threatens him with jailing him. I think it starts with, I think he can, he can go up to 5,000. I think the Manhattan DA has asked for 1,000 a day. I think I think he'll go higher than the 1,000 a day that's been requested. And I think he will tell him, if you violate this again, depending upon the nature of the violation and the impact on this case, because that's all I'm concerned about, is providing a, an appropriate criminal justice process. You are, you, I will find you in criminal contempt and you will go to jail. I don't know if it's the temporary holding cell in the back of the courthouse or it's like, take him to Rikers, for, you know, which is going to be apoplectic and apocalyptic if it happens because you got the security detail, the Secret Service, the candidate for president, the this and the that. I mean, I almost don't want to send him to prison, to be honest with you, because it'll just make him um, more of a martyr than he already is. But... I also want justice done, so I'm sort of on the fence related to whether you should actually put him in Riker's eye. Yeah, you know, I think you throw him in prison. Um, I think that the whole martyr thing becomes its own kind of narrative that should be met with uh, the strong arm of law and order to say, you're not a martyr, you're a criminal, you're a crook, you're a fraud, you're a loser. And the same way Justice Marchand is controlling that courtroom, you know, I think that we as a country that values law and order, and of course the Republican Party, you know, we, we, we've been so comfortable and we've been so weak to and allowed Donald Trump, this petulant, whiny loser, to go out there and just whine, oh, they're coming after me, they're coming after me. You know, we're the United States of America and it's time to stand up to these bullies, to these losers, to these wannabe fascists, to these criminals, and let them know what law and order is really about. We've been making these handy scorecards every single day. I, I don't wanna spend so much time on it, but I wanna put them up here very quickly. So if you wanted to take screenshots to remind yourself of just what happened every day, every day we do a scorecard like this. So Trump trial day one, Trump did a motion to recuse the judge that was denied evidence of the Trump catch and kill scheme where he tried to pay off people first by using AMI and then misclassifying and falsifying business records as legal fees. All that information's coming in. The Trump subpoena backfires to the DOJ and there was some text message and emails that were bad from Donald Trump that actually turned up in that batch of discovery. The Manhattan District Attorney filed the contempt motion. The judge set the contempt motion hearing. Trump was falling asleep. Trump did not submit his exhibit books on time, so the judge ordered that it be turned over in 24 hours. The jurors arrived. Trump was falling asleep again. 50 of the initial batch of 96 jurors said they couldn't be fair. The voir dire continued. Then we have Trump trial day two. Trump trial day two. Trump blamed his accountant and lawyers for the fraud he committed when he walked in. Trump waives his right to um, participate at the sidebar, which he was previously making, just trying to make everyone's life more difficult because he had a right to be at sidebars with the judge and then everybody waves it. And then so he realized, wait a minute, I'm going to have to stand up. I don't want to stand up. So he waved that. The voir dire removes. Trump fell asleep again. Trump scowled at a juror and then Justice Mershon said, stop that. If you do that again, there's going to be big issues. The judge admonished Trump. The first six jurors were sworn in with more voir dire. Wednesday, the court went dark. There was no trial. Then we went to day three on Thursday. The jurors arrived. Juror number two who was sworn in was excused because she felt intimidated after her identity may have been leaked. And Fox did a whole segment on juror number two before that. There were seven new Trump, or there was additional violations added to the contempt motion for a total of seven. Um, juror number four was excused. The previously sworn in juror four was excused for not disclosing an arrest. Then there was voir dire to 96 new jurors. The jurors reflected that they could be fair and impartial, but were not fans of Donald Trump. His policies 
or his behavior. Many of them did. Some of them said they didn't have an opinion one way or another. 12 jurors were selected with one alternate, and that brought us to Trump trial day four. And then in Trump trial day four, the jury was selected and sworn in. Trump was sleeping, possibly farting. There was a Sandoval hearing. Trump's lawyers complained that they don't know the DA witnesses. The DA was not going to disclose the witnesses, which they don't legally have to do, but they normally do. They're not going to do it because of Trump's behavior. Justice Mershon lays down the law and takes control of the courtroom and lets Donald Trump know his behavior is unacceptable and to sit down. Opening statements are on Monday. And then there was the appellate division rejecting one of Donald Trump's stay attempts on Friday. And then Donald Trump filed another uh, application to try to get trial denied as well. So if you just want to take screenshots of all of that, what would, what would be interesting, Popak, we were hearing earlier today as well, that Trump's team has been in talks with Michael Avenatti to try to have Avenatti testify against his client, Stormy Daniels, and, and testify at the, at the trial. Um, you know, we'll see, but I think there's going to be a lot of um, shenanigans, we'll say, that are, um, you know, that, that will be, um, you know, that will be happening. So I wanted to flag that because that was news from earlier in the day. Welcome back. That was an example of what we do every week, twice a week on the Midas Touch Network. And we call it Legal AF for a reason. Want to know why? Join us Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and then on audio podcast platforms, whatever your choice. If you know all about Legal AF, we thank you for being part of our audience and that you're already here. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that was Legal AF, and I'm Michael Popak, and I invite you to join our next episode on Wednesday and Saturdays on the Midas Touch Network and help Midas Touch get the 3 million free, I said it, free subscribers. And if you know about us already, you can be part of our ad hoc marketing department. Take that clip, send it off to your friends and family and people in your life and say, hey, you know that show, Legal AF, I like a lot. Here's an example of it. Maybe they'll join us. We're building this network together with you uh, in front of your very eyes. No outside investors here on the Midas Touch Network. So until my next Legal AF, until my next hot take, until my next Patreon-exclusive video, this is Michael Popak reporting.